Game 42, step six. We're gonna take turns now. So this is what's gonna happen. Notice now the highlight is blue. So it's no longer yellow because player, uh, first player is blue. And if I place a five here, now the highlight is orange because the second player is orange. So if I place a three, we're back to blue. Place a four, back to orange. So now the highlight color is changing from blue to orange as the problem specified. Also, you might notice that the uh, numbers that we're placing are also blue when they were placed by blue and orange by orange. Not exactly the same orange, although it's close. You can see that three over there. And if I were to place like a five, you notice the color blue of the text is a little different from the color blue of the highlight. Great, so we need to keep track of the current player. <clears throat> and I would recommend doing that in a variable. All the variables for this game have to be stored in data. So we remember them in between calls to us from uh, from TK Enter when it's calling our key pressed or when it's, uh, well, that's actually the only thing it's calling for us right now. And we draw all. Okay, so uh, data.currentPlayer feels like a good place to store the current player. You could store it as an integer, player zero, player one. You could store it as a Boolean, like true is player zero. Okay, I think storing it as an int is the way to go. So I think we should have something that looks like this. Okay, so the current player is player zero at the start of the game. Uh, to change the player, you just have to change data.currentPlayer to one. A nice thing about doing it as an integer is this can be an index into, for instance, a list. So the current, I'm gonna have a list of highlight colors, okay? And let's go back here and run this. And you'll see the light blue is this color right here. And if I place like a four, that orange now is that color there. So the current highlight color is data highlight colors of the current player, simple enough. Also notice we have highlight colors and text colors and those are different because as I noted, the highlight color here is light blue and the text color is dark blue. Okay, so uh, first thing is make sure that you no longer draw yellow, but instead you draw uh, the highlight in the appropriate color based on the current player. Okay, that shouldn't be too hard. Next, uh, what you have to do is <clears throat> you have to keep track when you place a number of its color. Hmm, how can you do that? You can actually have a 2D list of colors that correspond to the numbers in the board. That would work. Or if you'd rather, a 2D list of the player that uh, placed that number. Either way works. So in other words, but in addition to my cell values, when I place a three right there, I place a three in my cell value for row 0, 0, 1, 2, column 0, 1, 2, 3. So in two comma three of cell values, I'm placing that three but I also need to record that that was a blue three. See, it's a blue three. So I could, uh, and blue is player zero. So I could have another 2D list, maybe like sell players and put a zero in that corresponding location, which means player zero placed that three, or I could actually just put the color um, light blue and have a 2D list of colors. So I remember this one should be, actually, pardon me, dark blue. The text color is dark blue, but anyway, 2D list of colors. Either way, it's your choice. Finally, when it's time to change player, well, after you make a move, it's time to change player. And how do you do that? Well, you simply change the current player to zero if it's one and one if it's zero. Uh, so that seems pretty straightforward. And so when you're done with this turn, when, with this step of the process, you should be able to make moves and have turns changing between blue and orange and have the colors on the board, blue and orange.